from the official newspaper of the Borough of Belmar and the Asbury Park Press on December 13, 2023. A notice of this meeting was posted on the bulletin board of the municipal building. Take roll call, Councilman Donovan? Here. Councilman Kinney? Here. Mayor Bud Fusco? Here. Councilman Rodanero? Here. Councilman Levis? Here. Workshop. We um, we said at the last meeting we were going to talk about the sign ordinance uh, tonight. So maybe we should start off with that. Or does someone want to do something? Any other things for workshop? No. It's not. Okay. Let's start with, with the sign ordinance. Just to recap, uh, the planning board has a subcommittee. Uh, on signs and they did a, a lot of work on um, looking at our current ordinance and making recommendations as to things that might that the council might want to change in, in the current ordinance and I think you, you all had received that uh, from from April and I think we're kind of tasked with just figuring out what what it is we we want to do and um, and just see if that makes sense I mean the bigger the big issues I think that came up for the um, with the flutter flags, uh, the banners, um, signs the, uh, painted on walls, murals, things like that, um, and uh, signs in, in residential areas. So those those are I think the four major topics. So um, why don't we go into the flutter flags and the and the banners? Under, under the current ordinance, my recollection is they are both. Uh, not permitted, okay? and I think the the consensus at the at the planning board was that uh, they'd be permitted for for certain events like grand openings um, and maybe uh, a number of special events during the year. So, do we have any uh, comments on what what we think we should do for that? I have a comment, Mayor. Um, I I think that you know. There are, I would like to see us offer um, for people to either put in a permit for a flutter flag. Um, some situations, like we have some businesses in towns that, in our town that's in an alley, like our flower alley literally is an alley. Um, you know, our bagel shop in the plaza is hidden. Um, there are cer certain stores that um, might warrant more signage, um, as I kind of see them as a, having an advertising hardship. Um, and so I'd like us to, to consider that. Um, you know, I'm worried about the limitations on advertising um, flags in general. Um, I do think it's important to make sure we include the sandwich boards and the A-frame signs when they are passable by wheelchair, walkable. Um, also, I know that um, one of the issues that I see um, is like on Route 35, it's very hard to see anything else except the traffic. And so your entrance to McCleary Park um, is, is hard to get to. Um, and now finally, the Friends of the Belmar Harbor has signage up, and I think that's important. Um, and uh, you know, I, I think that in the past, there were grant programs. Uh, for nice awnings and signage, and I'm wondering if we could take a look into that first um, before we, we you know, tighten any ordinances so that we're not hurting our businesses. I, I think Council Lunar makes a lot of good points that I want to highlight actually because I think the last thing we should be doing is trying any way to limit our businesses' reach. Um, I, you know, and there are places in town, like you mentioned, that have had flutter flags like St. Rose. Um, that would fall under this that maybe we should take a closer look at. Um, 
thinking about how we build up Main Street and how we build Belmar as a brand that makes an enticing place for both new businesses to come to, our current businesses to flourish, and of course visitors to come and, and spend their money. Um, what can we do? We've talked about the awning program behind doors here. Um, I think it's a great thing to pursue um, to make Main Street more inviting and um, more consistent and also get that shade in the summer as we continue to see uh, 100 degree temperatures earlier and earlier in the, in the summer months. I, I thought we had an audit program, wasn't there a yes. black? Yeah, so I think we should definitely invite other businesses to participate in that so we are more uniform. I do think that looks kind of like nice for us to have a, a look up and down Main Street. I think that's that's something that would, that would be attractive to us as a borough. Um, I agree with the flutter flags, though, and what, what Councilman Ron De Niro said. I also think that there should, though, sometimes with like things like a grand opening, be a limited time that they should be allowed to, right? So is it a grand opening for a month or six months or a year? Like how grand is the opening, right? So we want to <laughs> maybe put a limit on that. Um, but otherwise, I do think that all of those are good, solid points that we to be considered. Funding program was through the Special Improvement District, not the borough. Oh, interesting. I, I do love, and I want to make sure that we're, you know, that we're thanking um, the um, the planning board and the signage committee. I mean, this takes time and, and effort. One of the things that I think is fantastic is making sure that we're. Um, making sure that we're not covering any signs um, that we need for road, um, you know, for travel, uh, anything that might be, you know, considered dangerous. I think that we need to enforce um, things that cover um, our signs in the borough. And speaking of our signs in the borough, I would love to see um, some better, better signage for our borough entrances, um, our park entrances, updated directional signs, um, we still have many that are faded around Belmar that need attention and replacement. Um, I know that a lot of work has already been done and I'm really grateful for it. Um, but I, I think that we can do even more to make people come into Belmar and stay. I think the purpose of this ordinance though is to create some set of standards, right? I understand we have some signs that might not be up to snuff that we own, but we can take care of that separately from this ordinance. The purpose right now is that it's kind of a wild west. We have in writing that things need to be approved by the sign committee, but the sign committee has no standards to go off of. So, you know, if someone could complain, what's the sign committee basing their approval or disapproval off of? We need to give them some type of standard that can say, we're rejecting this sign because of X, Y, and Z in our local ordinances. So I, I do agree we need to be wary of the businesses and what they want, and, but we do need to have some sort of controlling standards so everybody's playing by the same rules, right? So we don't just have signs everywhere in town. <laughs> Did, um, the sign, I, I don't know how the sign committee put together their recommendations. Were they speaking to businesses or? They did. Um, the the um, report that we have here, um, let's see, it was Exact uh, data, but I know. Um, oh, it was uh, Mike De Blasio, Rick Meyer, and um, Robert Forte, uh, and Planning Board Member Linda Sharkis. That was the committee that came up with the with the first set of recommendations. Um, in addition to that, uh, I was given also some photographs of of things that are technically not signs, but they're there are, you know, things like uh, the ice cream cone hanging on the building, um, you know, various other things that would, I'll pass these around, why don't you guys take care of this. Now, these are other issues that could, should probably be addressed in the, in the, in the sign uh, ordinance. But I don't think the draft that we've seen even addressed so no, many No, no, it hasn't. So, so, I mean, this is just another, another there, aspect of that. There was one portion I was reading about, um, about murals and paintings on the side of the business that um, were allowed as long as it evicted business. Okay, I, I think it'd be nice to have more murals and paintings around town, whether it evicted, 
business or not. But again, within the draft ordinance, it said they must be approved by the sign committee. But again, what standard is the sign committee using to approve that mural or not approve a mural? Right? There needs to be some type of standard they can they can base it off of. So I don't know if we want to even cover murals and things. I, I was thinking of perhaps uh, creating an ad hoc committee of um, a number of individuals, maybe two council people, maybe two um, uh, members of the tourism commission who have businesses in town, and maybe two members of the public to do a you know to do overlook this whole area, come up with some recommendations for us, uh, taking in light the, the uh, recommendations by the planning board subcommittee. This way, you know, we'll, we'll kind of have a head start on, on where we're going with this. I can volunteer to be part of that. Okay. I would like that, actually. Um, and if anyone else wants to just... just I'd be me. happy to. Okay. Uh, and then, uh, I, I think that makes sense. I don't know if you, you agree, because we could spend hours here uh, going through the you know the ins and outs of the of the uh, you know all the different variables, and I think a lot of the work has been done already. But again, we're starting at square one. For example, we don't you know we could conceivably as a group say we don't need to ban flutter signs you know depending upon what the input is that we get. So um, I think that might be more efficient you know doing that that way. Um, you know, and, and I, I don't anticipate it would be a big, long, drawn-out thing. You know, maybe say have one or two meetings, you know, get the information together, and then come back to the council with a recommendation. Um, this is something you know. we can definitely talk about in the next tourism meeting as well. Yeah. Okay, so I, I, you know, I guess we're just kind of taking a little uh, off ramp here to uh, to get it to a point where we can actually yeah, sit down and, and discuss That'd something. That'd be good to have some, you know, business owners and some local public people, as, you know, elected officials, and just come up with a plan. Yeah, we, yeah. Have, a, uh, we have a chamber of commerce starting for two, yeah. so they might yeah. be interested in having some input on this as well. Right. Okay. So that sounds like a plan. And, uh, you know, again, we don't want to delay it, but hopefully we can, um, we can get it back, you know, maybe at some point during the summer. And, and, you know, and then vote on a new ordinance at that point. Anything else for workshop? No. Okay. On to petitions. I did not receive any petitions. Uh, next is approval of minutes. Can I have a motion to approve the minutes of the May 28th meeting? Motion. Second. Councilman Donovan? Yes. Council McKinney? Abstain. Mayor McFusco? Yes. Councilman Rondonero? Yes. Councilman Levis? Yes. A reports of council. Councilwoman Donovan. Got a story about geese. down to about 20 Canada geese. Uh, there were brants, which are those smaller looking geese that have the full black hood. They're migratory, they're gone. Um, but it's starting to be molting season, which means they're about to lose their flight feathers. And uh, making them want to stay here, and other, other geese are coming in during the day. At the same time, there is a town in New Jersey, which I'll go in and <laughs> that had a contract with the USDA to euthanize their geese. And there's been protests. So a woman came forward who has a sanctuary farm, <laughs> who volunteered to provide sanctuary to the geese. And the town was told by the USDA that they were not allowed to provide sanctuary to the geese, that they signed a contract and now they had to kill the geese. So an entrepreneurial member of our Belmar Environmental Commission reached out to that sanctuary and found a spot for some of our geese. <laughs> this, story, this is the weirdest job in the world, guys. Um, um, and it turns out we are still looking. We have things in place. There is a chance that our geese will find a happy home in another place, like a summer camp, with their Canadian girlfriend. Um, but <laughs> our town attorney, 
with diligent Mr. Miguel, is uh, still looking to see if it is actually legal. Because right now we have a permit to all the eggs and hypothetically kill the geese, which we are not doing. Uh, but it might not be legal to move the geese. So we are looking into that. And that is your bi-monthly geese update. <laughs> so we can kill them, but we can't move them? <laughs> Correct. <laughs> um, so. uh, besides that, uh, the Belmar Environmental Commission is working hard as usual. We are working with the USDA, the, uh, Depart the DEP, uh, Army Corps of Engineers, Rutgers University, and private contractors still pursuing grants and funding. Uh, quite a lot of balls in the air, but doing great. We are also working on compiling a list of things that homeowners can do right now to lessen the amount of contaminants that are going into the lake. So at some point that will be available. We'll put it on social media. We'll be able to hand it, hand it out just easy things that you were interested that you could do. Um, so that's very exciting. We'll have another meeting coming up this week, I believe. Um, tourism, we have movies on the beach coming up. The first one, July 10th in Kanto. Um, so come, it does still get chilly at night at that point, so bring a sweatshirt, bring a towel, have a lovely time. Um, besides that, um, we are still doing outreach about Verizon, making sure we're working with the other towns um, to make it clear that we are still in this fight. Um, Fox uh, New York was down here. Um, they cut me out, but the <laughs> Councilman McKinnon made the cut, um, making sure that people still understand that this is a fight that's still, and Commissioner Arnone, um, making sure that people know that this is still a fight that we are fighting, um, that is still incredibly meaningful to us um, to keep towers off of our beachfront. Um, so that is moving on. Again, as always, if anyone has any questions, contact either of us. We are happy to answer any. Uh, I believe that is it. Thank you, uh, Council McKinney. Thank you, Mayor. Okay, so we had our uh, last ADA meeting last week and we discussed having our annual presentation to the Belmar Summer Campers, Recreation Summer Campers. They did a presentation last year. It was so well received that they asked us to come back this year. So the ADA committee is going to do a, meeting, uh, a little presentation on being sensitive to kids with special needs and anti-bullying. So that's gonna be at the Summer Campers July 12th. Um, and recreation this Saturday, June 15th, at Memorial Field is the next Old Timers baseball game. It's 1864 rules, so dig out your old playbooks and rule books. Uh, Mammoth Furnace is playing the Flemington Neshinok, Neshinok? So, well anyway, the game's at 11 o'clock this Saturday morning. Uh, Sign-ups are still happening for the Belmar Running Club and tennis lessons. They have begun, recreationists has begun fall soccer sign-ups. And anything you need to know is under belmar.com and under recreation. The next Shade Tree Commission meeting is this Thursday, 6.30. And around the schools, last day of Belmar School, is this this Friday? This Friday. This Friday. St. Rose Grammar School, last day is also this Friday. Eighth graders graduated last week, Thursday, June 6th. St. Rose High School graduated their seniors last Tuesday, the 4th. And the rest of St. Rose High School finals exams are tomorrow. And then school's out for summer. And that is all I have. Thank you. Uh, Councilwoman Rathanero. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, we had our Board of Trustees meeting yesterday for the Belmar Public Library, um, and I participated in the strategic plan meeting last Thursday. I'll let the Mayor fill you in on some of uh, what we discussed at the meeting. Some events from the Public Library. Um, they're listed up outside the courtroom. Um, if, if you want to take a, a sheet, there's so many events. Um, on the 15th, 11 a.m. is author time with Christopher Bogart's Sunflowers. Uh, the summer reading Beach Blanket Bingo starts tomorrow at 1 p.m. and Saturday at 11 p.m. So, or 11 a.m., my bad. So register online. Uh, this coming Tuesday, the 18th, is Juneteenth Celebration Concert with the Luck and Bill Orchestra and Professor, Professor Ronald Tyson, so please register online. Uh, the Belmar Housing Authority had its meeting last Monday. Thank you to the mayor for attending and discussing ways the borough can help with the BHA. Uh, once again, the facade work is going up for bid. A uh, few of us will be spray painting the outside tables and chairs tomorrow to freshen them up for summer. Uh, and the next meeting is July 1st at 5.15. Uh, I'd like
like to congratulate our Belmar employee, Anthony uh, Yan Yanazon, um, a medal winner for the New Jersey Special Olympics. He and others from the Special Olympics ran down Main Street for the annual law enforcement torch run. And thank you also to our Belmar Police Department. Uh, congratulations to Belmar Environmental Commission and Councilwoman Donovan on being awarded a grant from Sustainable Jersey. And thank you to those who came to our second annual Pride Flag Ceremony. It was a beautiful ceremony. Uh, thanks in advance to DPW and uh, Wingman Printing in Belmar for printing our um, senior high school banners. They're going up tomorrow. Uh, and lastly, please shop at Nostalgic Nonsense on Main Street for their 50% off sale in honor of Pat and in support of her husband, Kenny, who referred to Pat at her wake. Um, you know, she, that, Belmar was her middle name. Belmar was her middle name. And, uh, and we know that. Um, I, I think they have the shop until June 30th, uh, and then they'll have new owners, so let's show them some love. And uh, I think that's it. Mark your calendar. July 8th is the Lifeguard Tournament, 6 p.m. at 10th Ave Beach. Thank you, Council President Levis. Thank you, Mayor. I don't have a lot. Just a reminder, uh, Junior Guards is going to be starting up soon. Uh, the deadline to order your uniforms for your child is the 14th. They can be ordered from Beckman's, so just a reminder to do that. That deadline's approaching. That's all. Okay, and I'll just wind up with the library. Sure. Uh, two things that I wanted to announce. Um, some of you may or may not know that the library is getting new windows and they're they're all done except for the the two in the front of the building um they obviously did not follow the carpenter's rule where you measure twice and cut once so they have to um basically they have to uh, order some new ones so they'll be here in two months uh, the uh the other thing i'm, I'm uh, going to speak about are the library hours uh, they're going to be extended somewhat. Um, I don't have the chart, but I think it's the, the, the starting time, the starting time, which had been 9 o'clock on, on some days and 10 o'clock on the other, are all going to be moved to 9 o'clock. So Monday through Sunday, the library will be open at 9 a.m. Uh, the only other change is that on Friday, the current hours were 9 to 2, and they're going to be extended to 9 to 5. Okay, so you should be seeing that come out on their website and, and post it in the library. And uh, Councilman Rondonero talked about all the different events they're having, so uh, they're doing a great job. And that's all I have. Know the fireworks coming up on July 6th. So. Oh yes, we do have the fireworks on July 6th and the light show, which will be starting uh, before then. Mm -hmm. I think around 8 8:30. Yeah, 8:30. So let everybody know. Sometimes um, people don't realize that there's also a light show ahead of time. It's, it's pretty neat. So um, so try to get up there there early. Okay, public session. Anyone has a comment or question about a resolution listed on the agenda, please step forward and state your name and address. Mr. Kramer? Uh, Eugene Kramer, 4th Avenue. Um, if you would, just take a look at uh, uh, resolution 2024-121, uh, and that's uh, liquor license for La Dosha and uh, at the same time, uh, Resolution 2024-127, uh, that's uh, a liquor license, uh, this is a renewal uh, for uh, jacks by the tracks. Uh, 127 for jacks by the tracks, uh, says that it's a retail consumption license with uh, broad uh, package privilege, okay? And uh, the one for 124, which is La Dosha Vida, uh, it, do it does not say that it has uh, 
destroyed package uh, privileges. Um, I guess my question is uh, here, uh, you're both type 32 liquor licenses. Why does one say that it has broad package privileges and the other one doesn't? I mean, off the top of my head, I can't tell you why one would have it and one of, why another one wouldn't. Um, uh, but there, excuse me. The, the, the first uh, numbers there, 1306, that's the municipality. Mm -hmm. uh, the dash and then the second number, yeah. which in this case is 32, mm -hmm. defines what type of license that it is. I, I, I don't doubt it, but, you know, I, without looking at a statute, I couldn't tell you. Well, I'm, I'm just telling you, yeah. you're at the exact same type yeah. of license. Why is this description I don't know. here? Maybe one just didn't apply for it. I don't, I really, I'd be speculating. Yeah, was, were these actually public notice? No, they don't get public notice. Um, well, don't you it does also have the broad C, so we can just add that language into the resolution. It's just, for some reason, was never put in there all these years, but we can add that back in there. To ref but looking at their actual license that they filed with the state ABC, it does say the broad state. Yeah, so they, they do have a broad package privilege. Okay. Uh, in other words, they can set up, actually the difference between the two, uh, or I should say between a normal uh, retail consumption license is that uh, uh, normally with, with the liquor license, um, you can sell packaged goods, but it has to be within the bar room proper. And you may display uh, packaged goods only uh, on shelves on the wall. Whereas the one uh, with the broad package privilege, you can, as long as the license pre uh, premises is included, uh, they can put a warehouse and, uh, and, and sell uh, liquor out of the warehouse if it's attached to licensed premises. Uh, I, I'm just, actually I'm curious here as to, do any of these uh, license holders have plans or have they submitted plans to sell liquor outside the, the uh, bar room proper? Like floor plans? Or like a, yeah, yeah, I think we have to uh, submit a floor plan showing where we would be selling the package goods. Besides the bar. Some people the plan board to do that. I mean, you know, I think, you know, one of the problems you're going to have is if, if your license has been in, you know, has, has that package provision or rider on it, if you don't continue it now, you're going to run into problems. You know, why, why did you take away this rider? You know, without without due cause. I mean, if it's been done the same way for years, you're kind of affecting the uh, license holder's rights um, if you don't have a reason for modifying the license. Other than that, I mean, if you someone wants to change how they're going to sell liquor, you know, the amount they they got to go to the planning board or the zoning board, or more likely the zoning board, because it would be a change of use. Yeah. Okay. Uh these have not been pub public notice, not, not published in the paper? Not required to be. These are just annual renewals that we do every year. Okay. But it, there is no public notice. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? Oh, can I make one more comment, please? Mm -hmm. uh, well, Dr. has uh, no handicap parking there. Um, over the years, uh, well, I should say, at least one in particular. I live on Fourth Avenue, about three blocks uh, west of where La Dosha Baby is. Uh, Fourth Avenue is a two way street, and uh, I don't think there are any handicapped parking spaces on Fourth Avenue. But
But in any case, uh, it, it's really not sufficient. Uh, I, can, I can look into that for you, Mr. Kramer. Is there, there should be some up on the beach right there, right? In the fourth yeah, there's one right across the street. Right. On the uh, on the left hand side of Fourth Avenue right. on that, Ocean. That does not relieve. The, no, I'm not saying it does. I'm just saying that's the closest the, one that's there. That does not relieve the business owner. If he has parking on the property, at least one, at a minimum, has to be a handicapped parking space. Uh, I'll tell you what I've noticed in, in Belmont. Uh, apparently, uh, Belmont does not pay attention to Americans with Disabilities Act parking. Okay, um, what you do notice with the national franchise companies, if you go to 7-Eleven right on Ocean Avenue, which is very busy, they do have a handicapped parking space. Likewise, uh, uh, Dairy Queen, a national franchise, they make sure that there's a handicapped parking space that they meet the minimum requirements. Uh, what I'm saying, what actually has happened to me here with like Ocean Vita, I've had a, a gentleman one time just pulled into my driveway with the car. And, uh, well, he got out and, and he came over to me and asked, you know, can I park my car here? And he said, I have, uh, I'm, I'm a professional caregiver and uh, I'm transporting someone who's sitting in the front seat of the car uh, and, 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 and they have a bucket list to go to La Dosha Vida, three blocks away. This guy couldn't find a place to park and uh, get the handicapped person out of the car uh, with parking on the normal way on the street. Uh, apparently, uh, it's preferable if you're transporting handicapped people that they sit in the front seat, uh, usually a front seat door, passenger side, has uh, more of room to swing legs out and easier to get into, uh, into a wheelchair. And no place on 4th Avenue, there's curves. <laughs> you, you have to park the passenger side of the vehicle up against the curb. And it makes it very difficult for anybody that's trying to transport uh, a handicapped person. Uh, actually, most businesses that have installed handicapped person, person, parking places have noticed an increase in business because they accommodate handicapped people. Now, our plaza, where my office is, has two handicapped spots. So I can tell you some Belmar businesses do participate in that. So it's not everybody. But there is a parking lot behind Dolce Vita, and I'm not sure if that's just for loading or what, but we can, we can look into it for you for sure. Zoning, uh, the zoning board approved an application for La Dolce Vita. They purchased the property next to them, and that's part of the reason why they couldn't, they didn't have the space to add more parking sp spots. So they purchased the property next to them, and get, when they renovate that building, they're taking over that old building, and they're redoing the entire parking lot in the back, including adding handicap parking. I don't know when they're going to do it, but they did receive zoning board approval for it. Maybe it's coming. Maybe it's coming. Okay. Um, I'm just wondering now who we're talking about. If they're buying that entire building, maybe there will be a uh, package that stores there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyhow, uh, thank you very much. Okay. We would look, look into that. Uh, actually, the last time that, uh, more than a couple of years ago, when they uh, they put they don't own all the buildings uh, they don't own the one on the corner but I believe they own the, uh, one or two spaces uh, of the building that's next door and uh, there was a the question came up at that time about handicapped parking space and but I, I know it, it it was an older gentleman very old and he agreed to do it. But it never happened. But I think if we looked into it, I certainly would appreciate it. Okay. Thank Definitely. You. Okay. I think we're. A motion to close the public session? Motion. Second. 
I have a motion to approve the resolutions as listed on the consent agenda. Second. Yes. Council McKinney? Yes. Mayor Bogopusco? Uh, yes. Councilman Rondonero? Yes. Councilman Levis? Yes. Okay, and then we have two resolutions that are separate. Um, we have resolution 2024-130, a resolution authorizing the issuance of a club license to the Belmar Fishing Club. Do we have a motion to approve? I'll make the motion. Second. Councilman Donovan? Yes. Councilman Kinney? You abstain. Mayor Bocopusco? Yes. Councilman Rondonero? Yes. Councilman Levis? Yes. Okay, next is resolution 2024-131, resolution authorizing the issuance of a club license to the order of the Friendly Sons of Shillelagh. Do we have a motion to approve? A motion. Second. Councilman Donovan? Yes. Councilman Kinney? Yes. Mayor Bocopusco? Yes. Councilman Rondonero? Yes. Councilman Levis? Abstain. Now we're on to ordinances. We have the first one is second reading and public hearing on ordinance 2024-11. This is an ordinance amending chapter 26, housing and property maintenance, establishing a lead-based paint inspection program. This is open for public hearing. If anyone would like to speak on this ordinance, please step forward, state your name and address. Uh, you're being from Fourth Avenue. Uh, under Chapter 26 uh, of, of Belmar Code, uh, there's actually, uh, it incorporates uh, a couple of different things, but uh, one, of, one code that, uh, uh, that's adopted by the borough of Belmar is the International Property Maintenance Code. And uh, I just want the mayor and council to be aware, the International Property Maintenance Code, used to be called the Boca Property Maintenance Code, has uh, never been adopted by the state of New Jersey. And I think we're gonna start running into some real conflicts here because uh, when it comes to uh, lead paint, uh, that is covered uh, by the Uniform Construction Code. And uh, any of this business having to do with the International Property Maintenance Code, uh, the state of New Jersey was, just won't support. They don't issue any licenses. There's no such thing as a uniform construction code, property maintenance uh, uh, code official. Um, this, this is really a matter when it comes to uh, lead paint. This is a matter that's covered by, uh, clearly by the Uniform Construction Code. Um, now this inspection program, I, I see that on the, uh, on the resolution part here, uh, there, there was the hiring of uh, an, an environmental uh, lead paint uh, inspection service. But if there's any lead abatement that has to be performed, that has to be done by the borough building subcode inspector. Uh, I guess what I'm saying here is this chapter 26, this has to, someone has to take a look at that and, and you'll see uh, the borough some time back uh, adopted this international property maintenance code and it's just not applicable in the state of New Jersey and the DCA will not support it. That sounds like a uh, research question for Mr. Miguel um, to take a look at that. Thank you. Motion to close the public hearing. Motion. Second. Aye. Aye. Can I have a motion to adopt ordinance 2024-11? Motion. Motion. Second. Second. Councilman Kinney? Yes. Mayor Bocopusco? Yes. Councilman Rondonero? Yes. Councilman Levis? Yes. Okay, next is second reading and public hearing of Ordinance 2024-12, an ordinance in amending Chapter 27, Street Excavation, Sidewalks, and Curbs. 
This is open for public comment. If anyone would like to speak, please step forward, state your name and address. Motion to close the public hearing. Motion. Second. Aye. Aye. And can I have a motion to adopt ordinance 2024-12? Make the motion. Second. Councilman Donovan? Yes. Councilman McKinney? Yes. Mayor Bacofusco? Yes. Councilman Rollinero? Yes. Councilman Lewis? Yes. Okay, next is second reading and public hearing on ordinance 2024-13. It's an ordinance amending Chapter 26, Housing and Property Maintenance, amending Section 2.9.8. This is open for public comment. If anyone would like to speak, please step forward, state your name and address. Motion to close the public hearing? Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. And a motion to adopt Ordinance 2024-13. Councilman Donovan? Yes. Council McKinney? Yes. Mayor Michael Fusco? Yes. Councilman Rondonero? Yes. Councilman Levis? Yes. And last one is Ordinance 2024-14. This is an ordinance amending and supplementing Chapter 44, Stormwater Management. And this is enacting and adopting required stormwater management provisions to be in compliance with the state DEP regulations. So can I have a motion to offer this ordinance for first reading and introduction? Motion. Second. Councilman Donovan? Yes. Council McKinney? Yes. Mayor Bacofusco? Yes. Councilman Rondonero? Yes. Councilman Levis? Yes. All right, so that's all that. Next is public session. If anyone would like to speak, Please step forward and remember to state your name and address first. Good evening, Linda Sharkis, 4th Avenue. There were some rumblings on Thursday about uh, concerts at the library being reduced in number. Could you give us an update on what's going on with respect to that? It's so, an activity that so many people enjoy. I hope there's no validity to those comments. No, there isn't any validity. We, we at the meeting yesterday, we, we discussed um, the possibility, or well, they had thought that there might be a possibility of putting them off because there had been a, an issue with the uh, possible violation of the noise ordinance. Um, and. Just to go into it very briefly, the state has, in the state noise ordinance, there's a, an exception section which permits, um, which exempts public um, celebrations from the noise ordinance. Our ordinance doesn't have any exception section. So uh, Mr. McGill and I and, and the library director kind of talked that over. It was, it was my feeling that the exception at the state level still applies, so that we were going to move forward with with the um, with the concerts as planned. Because what we're also going to do in order to remove any ambigu ambiguity, uh, Mr. McGill is going to be drawing up an amendment to our local noise ordinance, which will incorporate the state exceptions into the local ordinance. So there will be no. Uh, confusion as to whether or not public celebrations are exempt from the noise ordinance. But for the, for the purpose of moving forward, the, the concerts are going to be um, continuing. That's great. Okay. Thank you very much. Joe Mangione, 203 South Lake Drive. Actually, I've got two points. Um, First is, um, a number of the residents around the lake have been in contact with the Belmar Environmental Committee, and they've got clearly a lot of things going on in terms of improving the lake and the environment around the lake. Uh, and there's still a lot of misinformation, both long-term and short-term. So I'm, I'm suggesting that you could set up a, a, a presentation here at the county, and maybe at the next council meeting, of what is exactly going on with the work on the lake. I can tell from the email we got from, from them there is a lot going on, but it seems like very much long-term projects 
and there's a lot of short-term things people don't understand. So rather than let a lot of rumors go and he said, she said, that might be useful to have that have that at a council meeting. Okay. Um, I, I agree. We could work on that. Yeah. And in fact, we have been working on it. I was actually hopeful it would happen tonight, but we had some things come up at the last minute that we wanted to be able to share just in case. So hopefully, it could be the next meeting. It's yes. It's classic. Yes. He said no. It's this. No. It's that. No. It's the other thing. I think it's a good a good suggestion. Whatever it is, sure it's the, the one that you meeting. like. Is the answer. I have an update. <laughs> information floating around about the affordable housing issues in town. Can you update us on what's going on? We just happen to have our affordable housing attorney here. Uh, I don't think we have an, an update uh, that is any different from the one I made uh, probably at the last meeting or the meeting before. Uh, the current status is we are still working with the, I think it's five interveners uh, to come to an agreement uh, with the Fair Share Housing Group, the interveners, and the court, so that the court can issue basically what they call a judgment of repose, which basically says we, we've done what we need to do, and we've met the third round obligation that we have. And that's pretty much where we're at, and all I'm going to say about it at this point. But yes, there are four. Uh, interveners, five interveners, and, and we're going to, um, we're continuing negotiating with them. It's a, it's a three-way uh, negotiation, so it's, it, it gets a little complicated because every party has to agree to everything that's, that's happening. What does that mean we met the third obligation? Not clear that means. Every, every municipality in the state of New Jersey has a constitutional obligation to, to provide affordable housing, okay? And they went by rounds. We're, the third round of this uh, obligation is coming due at the end of next, at the end last, next July. And uh, Belmar has not uh, finished our third round. So we need to get the approval from the court that we have met our third round obligation. So, and that's what we're working on is, is so many different variables extending from what is our obligation what, you know, what the interveners want to propose, what Fair Share Housing Group wants to see as our obligation. So it's, it's you know, it's not a one-on-one -on -one negotiation, it's like a one-on-three negotiations. So, so the, the rumors that are floating around, assuming they're rumors, are there going to be this many houses in these many locations? You don't know that yet? No, not, not, I mean, we know where the developments are, but we don't have the final figures on you know how many how many units will there be, how many affordable units, and things like that. Can you state what you, where, where they are? Yeah, I think that was a public. Uh, we discussed that before. There's a uh, there's the where are we now? We're in the front of the building. There's the the uh, area across the street where the, the triangle is. That's one area that's going to be developed, uh, and a parcel across River Road. There's the parcel down on Eighth uh, and Main which is just grass right now. There's a, the parcel on uh, 35 between 8th and 10th that has the Belmar Motel and the two catering halls. Um, and I'm missing one. And there was a, there's a parcel on 10th Avenue uh, right adjacent to Flames, low, low rise building there. Uh, so those are the four parcels that are part of the... Um, so they're, they're going to happen just a matter of how many it's going to be, yeah, it's the developers are in the process of telling us what they want to do and getting approval to do it, yes. Well, when you guys were campaigning, you talked about cutting back on development. How do we wind up in this situation? Well, that's, a, that's not a, a consistent question. Yes, we're, we're trying to cut back on the uh, development by complying with the, the law. Because if we did not comply with the with the law, then what would happen is we would be open to builder remedy suits, which would then we would lose the ability to control the size of the development. So that's that's really where where you know where we're going. You know we we take we took the positive step when we first came in to say we need to get control over this development, 
And the only one way we're going to get control over it is by instituting an action with the court, which is called a declaratory judgment action, so that, that we can keep down the, the um, development and, and what kind of uh, parcels that they want. Uh, at the end of the day, I, we will have a, a presentation which will show where we were and where we are now. And I think the public will see that we made great strides in taking what initially was wanted in terms of development and what we actually got. So we're, we're um, I think we're doing, a, a, you know, as much as we can to keep it uh, reasonable. Well, I will tell you, it doesn't feel to a lot of residents in town like there was much transparency, nor was there a, a control on the development. So that's just the opinion of a lot of people around town. Yeah, well, the transparency is hard because we're not able to really speak about it because of the court case. Well, that's a legal, that's a legal impediment that we have that we can do nothing about. So you couldn't say anything to anybody in town about it, it's all over the town, so, you know. I don't know what you're saying is all over town. Well, what I'm just telling you is totally all over town. People are saying it's development. And I just told you, they're, they're going to be four developments. I told you where they're going to be, and we don't have the details yet to share. We'd be, we, we can't share it because we're under court Fair. order. I just think it doesn't feel like controlling development or transparency. No, you're entitled to your feelings. Linda Sharkis, 4th Avenue. Following up on the last gentleman's question, will Belmar residents have the oppor first opportunity on the low-income housing that's being constructed? I have, to, I have to confess, I don't know how that works. Okay, can we have somebody do a presentation on that so we understand what's available to our community? Because at the rate we're going, some of us won't be able to afford where we are when we have to talk about the infrastructure and the cost for education, et cetera. Which I think my, under, is my understanding that the, the affordable housing is at three levels. It's, it's moderate, there's low, and there's very low income. So, and I don't know what the, what the, the how that's going to play out, but um, yes, that will, will be explained as to what the income levels are, and how one goes about, you know, applying for those units. My question is, is considering that there are several counties involved, that our community would get first dibs at some of those, the availability of those low-income housing. Are you talking about, about low-income housing or the Belmore Housing Authority housing? No, I'm talking about what to be constructed. Okay, I don't know. I don't know if it's limited, <laughs> Leslie. London is our, our attorney for redevelopment. One of our attorneys, I should say. She can answer that question better than I can. <clears throat> Unfortunately, the way it's set up is that it's based on the region, and the region includes three counties, Ocean, Monmouth, and Mercer. So you have an administrative agent who controls a list that anyone in those three counties can be on, and it's picked randomly like that. We can have, um, I guess, local preferences. If you have local preferences, you don't get credit for it from uh, Fair Share Housing Center. So it would be a waste in the sense of that uh, type of housing. We're required by law to by region, so we can't have a local preference. Okay, so could you give us some guidance on how those people might qualify, get on the list, so they could qualify in that pool? Because I think that's what you're Yes, I, I think when we have a presentation, we can go into detail about that. It's um, a process that will be laid out in a manual and give procedures how you get on the list and what happens, what type of information you will need to be on the list. And I think at the last presentation we had, um, we had a chart which had um, the income levels. Yeah, I was here for that. Yes, I remember you from that meeting. So I would just <clears throat> think the residents getting that information sooner rather than later would be of value for making sure they at least have an opportunity to be selected for one of the, those new unions. Yes. Thank you. And I'm, I'm correct in thinking that all of those procedures have to be approved by the court. 
Those, those are going to be all. We have a lot that the court will approve as part of your housing plan, which includes the manual on how you will apply and how you will market these units. And that's the role of your administrative agent, which is a role that you'll have to uh, fill. And that person's job will be to deal with residents and deal with questions regarding your affordable housing obligations. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Any other comments? Clarhanger, 18th and B. I think the answer to all my questions is probably going to be no, but what I was going to ask was if there was any renderings that we could view as to are we going five levels, six levels, four levels, are they apartments, are they condos, townhouses that will bring us in tax dollars? Yeah, but I believe also that would be part of the presentation that would be made. Okay, so we will be able to finally see pictures yes. and hopefully the Mediterranean project is going to look as nice as it did three years ago when we saw it. Yes, everything that, that's going to happen has to be voted on by the council, correct? Yes. So, and the public will see all that prior to to us, you know, voting on that. Yes. yes. I get it, and I, and I understand the frustration that people feel like the decisions are being made with absolutely no input from anybody, no one's seeing anything, and I get it with the law, but it's the word of transparency and stuff like that. But. One more question. Um, a couple months ago, I had sent an email asking, after I watched a Lake Como meeting where they announced that the town was being sued for the um, fountains and lakes, and asked if we could make the announcement, if we are being sued by someone, just let us know. We don't need details. Obviously, we don't get details. But just the borough's being sued by someone, just want to let you know. And you were going to check with the attorney on that, and then but the, 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 the thing is, a lot of that goes directly through our, our insurance carrier, so we might not even, I mean, I'm sure we know, April, I'm going to, they let us know, apparently, like if somebody slips and falls and, they, and they're suing the town, that that gets... Right, that just through, goes right through the insurance company. Yeah. I'm talking to somebody like Ashley, and it's going like, like, this is something like, uh, come on. And somebody gets mad, you know, and wants to say, like, I don't want that fountain there, and they're going to sue the town. That's the stuff that I was wondering about. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a more of an unusual type of lawsuit. I mean, I think most of the lawsuits you'll, you'll find that we get involved in other routine, you know, like, like I said, somebody slips and falls, or a, a municipal vehicle damages a car, or, you know, something like that. But, um, yeah, I think if there was something that was uh, unusual like that, it'd probably be direct. But we wouldn't be able to say much about it because it would be litigation. No, I, I get that. It's just the awareness, like, hey, the town's being sued, just FYI. That's what they do. Yeah, it's all public information, yeah. you know. Okay. If, you, if you let your fingers do the walking, you can go on the judiciary website and just put in Belmar as a defendant, and you'll see all the lawsuits that Belmar is involved in. Well, that okay? Mr. So <laughs> <laughs> Mayor, um, back to her first question, though. I believe, please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, that even after council approves, these buildings still go to zoning for a planning board for some degree of yes. input as well. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Input that will make, we could, could make a difference or just like? Well, we, we can put any impediments uh, to it from you know, moving forward, but things that normally the planning board would be uh, responding to or commenting to they will still have an opportunity to do that when the project goes before that. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Comments? Okay. Can I have a motion to close the public session? Motion. Sorry. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, our last item is a resolution 2024-132, resolution of the council permitting the council to adjourn into executive session.